How do the Pittsburgh Steelers find Joey Porter Jr.'s new partner at cornerback? We'll talk about the options in the draft and in free agency and take your calls here on the Locked On Steelers podcast. I'm your host, Chris Carter, joined today by Nick Farabaugh. Let's get into it. You are Locked On Steelers, your daily Pittsburgh Steelers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Steelers podcast. I'm your host, Chris Carter, bringing you your daily dose of all things on the Pist- on the Pittsburgh Steelers. As always, you can find this show on your favorite podcasting apps and on YouTube. Like this video if you enjoy it. Subscribe to this YouTube channel to get all of your daily Monday through Friday episodes, as well as our bonus content. We thank you for making us your first listen every day because we're your team every day. And today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more right now. New customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 if your bet wins by visiting FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. As I said before, we're joined by Nick Farabaugh of SteelersNow.com. He works with our, with our guy Alan Saunders over there. We're glad to have Nick back on. And Nick, I, I want to take people back, way back to like September. It was a discussion you and I had in the cafeteria at Akershire Stadium and we were talking about the Steelers cornerback situation and you said way back then you said Chris the guy is Legereus Sneed I'm telling you now he's gonna be the guy in free agency and he had a spectacular year was a big part of why the Chiefs won the Super Bowl and is set to be an unrestricted free agent that the Steelers could target here but I wanted to ask you with the Steelers' salary cap situation, with everything else in mind, with the corners that are available to them and into the draft, where do you see the biggest priority coming for the Steelers to address cornerback? I feel like a guy like Snead makes so much sense because my thing is I think we know what their quarterback plan is going to be at this point. It's going to be Kenny Pickett and a vet, uh, but not you know a vet that's going to threaten his starting job or at least is going to only provide competition. So what's the easiest way to get – an equalizer level, right? Mm-hmm. How do you equalize against CJ Stroud, Justin Herbert, Joe Burrow? Uh, if you face these alien quarterbacks in the playoffs, to which you will, because it's the AFC. I always thought it was a great defense, like an elite defense that legitimately puts terror in teams. You have TJ Watt, you have Minka Fitzpatrick, you have Cam Hayward, you have Keanu Ben, you have all these guys that are really good players. Joey Porter Jr. is a rising star. So I think you need a stud secondary. That's what I think is the last missing piece. That's why this defense was good, but not elite this year. They didn't have an athletic secondary. They got beat. They couldn't play as much man coverage as they wanted to. Ran a lot of half field coverages to kind of protect the other side away from Joey Porter Jr. Like you look at what happened when Joey Porter Jr. went into the lineup. He shut down the top receivers, but even the top receivers, when they would go away from Joey Porter Jr. for like 10 to 15 routes, would end up still getting like 90 yards. And none of it would be on Joey's watch. It would be on the other guy's watch. Or they would hit him over the middle of the field on a tight end uh, seam route, whatever it might be. So I think a guy like Snead is perfect. Why? Because he's not just an outside corner. He is a do-it-all guy. He can play in the slot. He can be your kind of physical press corner. So you can press up on teams. You can take the fight to teams that have great receiving cores, like the Bengals, for example. If T. Higgins is coming back, which we think he is because he's going to get tagged probably, this is a great way to do it. You bring in another top corner, and you can say mano a mano. We'll match you. Like Jamar Chase and T. Higgins are a great corner duo, but Joey Porter Jr. and LeJerry Snead are going to be one of the most physical press man groups. It feels like the league is moving more and more towards press man stuff. Um, and I just think the Steelers have been kind of forethoughting on that. They are ahead of that curve. I think they want those lengthy big guys. He works perfectly there. He's a ball hawk. He's physical. He can blitz, so he's a versatile chess piece that can do everything Patrick Peterson did last year, but he's younger, and he's elite. That's kind of where I look at it. and so I think he's the guy I would look at. There's cheaper guys if you don't want to spend that much money. Uh, Sean Murphy Bunning, for example, could mm-hmm. make sense, um, but I think Snead turns this corner duo into one of the best in the NFL. That's and that's the thing. I think that a lot of good defenses and great defenses are being built with pillar cornerbacks that you know, hey, you put receiver one on him, receiver two on him, 
those guys are going to have a hard time getting getting open. What would you say about other free agents out there? Another guy that's out there is Jalen Johnson, who the Steelers were rumored to maybe trying to get around the trade deadline, or other guys even like Kendall Fuller from the Commanders who could be out there. Um, all guys that are in their their mid to late twenties who have good NFL experience, but also could cost the will definitely cost the Steelers probably more than like twelve million dollars a year in salary cap space. Yeah, it's just. Corner's the biggest hole on the team on the defensive side of the football right now. Mm -hmm. And so if you want to build a dominant defense, you got to fix corner two or corner one, whatever. If you want to put Joey Porter Jr. in the corner two role, because Snead and him are 1A, 1B, like him and Johnson would be 1A, 1B. Now, Johnson's a little different. He's more of an off-man guy, played a lot of off-man in Chicago. Can he do press? He, he's done it in limited snaps and he's looked good. But again, there's more of a question of translation there. I think a guy, I, I look at a guy like Sean Murphy Bunting. I say that because he's a big guy. He can get up on you. Ronald Darby had a good year with the Ravens this year. If you want to spend it a little cheaper there. I really like the fit for Kendall Fuller. Again, we're talking about another guy that fits in the slot, can do a lot of different things. So he kind of fills two needs. Now you would still need that sub package corner. But I also think what that would allow you to do if you get a Sneed or a fuller is if you keep Patrick Peterson, it allows you to do a lot of different things with Patrick Peterson and move him around and kind of be this veteran savvy. He can pay, play the penny. He can play that dime back role. Like that could be very interesting. I think if you add someone, maybe, you know, you get a, a cheaper deal for Patrick Peterson and, and keep him around. I think it could be real interesting to, to kind of see that, but I think there's a lot of good, kind of guys there Sneed Johnson Fuller I like Murphy Bunting as like the bargain guy coming off mm. a pretty good year with the Titans ball production uh, can be physical can play man to man does a lot of different things for you so I, I think that there's different routes they can go if say they don't want to make the splash of corner maybe they want to go out and sign I don't know maybe they like a tackle that got released or they want to sign a D lineman or they want to make that splash somewhere on the offensive side of the ball um, I think that there's avenues for that but i still think we're looking you know sneed fuller johnson someone like that man it, it really feels like to me the focus of free agency should be on corner and safety to build a dominant defense and i think if you have a dominant defense you can really even the playing field and you don't have to put as much pressure on the offense to go out and score 30 points in the postseason that's that's one of the big things i think that is really holding them back I'm right with you. I think that, that when you look at the Steelers and their their needs right now, corner, and go look at the way the Chiefs play. They could stick to receivers. They could just say, hey, just say, hey, run and take these guys, these guys away. Don't give them easy reads. Find a way to make sure that they're that you're in their hip pocket consistently. And you know, it doesn't mean that the, your secondary will be un, you know, unstoppable. There were every secondary gets beat, but having guys who play man well. I think is certainly a part of the key that you want in today's defenses. Real quick here, because we spent a lot of time talking about free agents. This cornerback class, is this a year with all the other Steelers needs that you take a guy in the first round? Because there's a lot of talent, and some people even say you could wait to the second or third round and still find your guy. There's so many good corners in this class. You know, even at 20, there's like five guys they could take. They could take, you know, if guys that are worthy of 20, Quinn Young Mitchell, Terry on Arnold, Cole Aiden McKinstry, Nate Wiggins, Cooper DeJean. Like, that's five, five of them. And then mm -hmm. you go to the second round, and I can name Ennis Rakestraw and all these other guys. Third round, Kyrie Jackson. Like, I can I love play, Kyrie Jackson. Have, I'm a big Kyrie Jackson fan, yeah. too. Um, the other Missouri corner, Chris Abrams Drain, is a really mm -hmm. good player. Um, like, you look at all these guys, and they are just there, there, there. You can get stars in the third round in this class. But if you have one of those special guys there, if a Terry on Arnold falls, if a Quinion Mitchell falls, like it is worth that too, because these are guys that have corner one potential. So, and they fit what the Steelers want to do. Like a Quinion Mitchell is a press guy, length comes up six foot three, like fits what they like, right? Like a mm -hmm. lot of good things. And there's a lot of good fits, a lot of different archetypes. There's a really good slot class too. You look at a guy like Ty Key Smith or a Mike Sandra still, like all of these different guys. This is a loaded corner group. So, yeah, I think they probably can focus on, you know, they could get a tackle, they could get a center. Uh, they could go elsewhere with that first round pick. But this corner class is so deep that honestly, to me, this could be a really good class where you go get a free agent and then you double up on it and you solidify that room for years. Like that's the type of class we're talking about. And, and I think it, it's, it'd be really cool because – you you kind of had like people. There's some people out there that are gonna say, "Well, what about Corey Trice? What about Darius Rush?" And listen, I like the potential of those guys. 
But those are two guys that a seventh round pick and a guy that you traded for nothing or you got you got off of another team because he wasn't fit and fitting in there. Those are guys that can be developmental pieces. Whereas if you draft a guy high and sign a guy that, that that's really worth it, you have three cornerbacks that you can truly rely upon. And then you still have two guys for let's say down the line. You want you like Legarius Sneed or whoever you sign in free agency, they're aging out. You can move on, but and you want to keep Joey Porter Jr. and you, but you, you're not sure if you can keep that second guy that you drafted, or you can, and you want to have another third option who's been developing. That's what those guys represent, or like, or if you miss on on, on one of these signings or free agent, or if someone gets hurt, you have backups. I'm right with you. Cornerback is a priority for this team, as much as center, as much as tackle, as much as anything else right now. And if they can get it right this offseason, it can be the thing that turns the Steelers from being good defense to being an elite defense. And they have other issues as well, but we'll get to more of that in a second here because I want to talk about some questions that we got some from some of our callers here with Nick Farabaugh of SteelersNow.com. I'm Chris Carter of Locked on Steelers. Stick with us. we still got a lot to discuss. But first, I want to remind you that this show is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, the number one sportsbook in America. Right now, new customers can get $150 back in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet right now. And if you're like me, football season being done doesn't mean that I'm done with sports. FanDuel gives you so many ways to play NBA, NHL, college basketball, and so much more action. And right now, it's great because in this time, there's every day, there's action. There's hockey, there's basketball, there's other sports out, out there as well. And there's so many ways for you to find W's on FanDuel Sportsbook right now. You can make quick bets, make, make, make live same game parlays. You can get exclusive prop bets and so much more. And remember, new customers, if you join FanDuel today, you get $150 back in bonus bets if your first bet of at least $5 or more wins. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to sign up today. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel an official sportsbook partner of the NBA. We're back here on the Locked On Steelers podcast. I'm Chris Carter. He's Nick Farabob, SteelersNow.com. We're going to keep this show rolling, and we're going to address some of your questions. Now, as always, you can call into the show at 412-223-6644. Leave your question where you're from and keep your question under a minute, and we'll get you on the show. Um, Nick, we're going to have you take part in some of these, these answering questions. This one comes from Paul in Greenville, who's asking about the Steelers' next round of cuts that need to be, to be, to be made. Take it away, Paul. Hi, Chris. Paul from Greenville, Pennsylvania, calling. I was wondering if some of the players that are mentioned to be cut could not just have their contracts reworked reworked particularly uh alan robinson i think he he had a 70 percent catch rate per target and uh i don't think he was really used properly in the, either by the uh canada offense or uh maybe just kenny wasn't able to get the his third read he's a really good possession receiver in my opinion i saw him play in chicago for years uh also patrick peterson who May have lost a step, but he certainly added value in the last few games for uh, in the defensive backfield. So anyhow, um, I think they would still add value as players. We just need to rework their contract. Thanks so much. I try to listen every day. Bye for now. Thank you, Paul. Appreciate your question. Again, 412-223-6644 to get your question on the show. Nick, we, you know, some of those names we, can't, we also mentioned. We talked about Patrick Peterson. Let's talk about him real quick. If the Steelers were to keep him, I imagine they'd have to rework that deal because I think he what he's a $10 million cap hit. That's a lot of money for what Patrick Peterson was doing for the team. He's not an outside corner anymore. If if at best he's a safety slash like fringe DB that, that floats around the field for you. Uh, and, and if he does that, he needs to get better at tackling, in my opinion. What would be a fair situation if they keep if they would keep Patrick Peterson that you could see it working for the Steelers, or do they just need to just cut cut, cut ties now? You probably have to ask him to take a pay cut. Um, I just, I don't, he could start next year to start off the year like Levi Wallace did, but realistically, you're probably going to sign a guy and you're probably going to draft a guy. I do think that double up strategy is probably going to happen. The Steelers made it a priority last year by drafting Trice and JPJ. I think they're going to come back again this year and do that. So Peterson can't be, you know, a dime back or a 10 million cap hit, basically. Like, that's not realistic. So there's two ways you could do that. You can ask him to take a pay cut or you can extend it for a year. I mean, that's possible, too. Maybe you add void years and lower the cap hit. 
um, and just spread it out a little bit more. Now, that's obviously pushing the can down the road, which has its repercussions eventually. Um, but I do think Patrick Peterson has useful traits, as I talked about. I feel like if you add a guy like Snead, for example, if he can take a pay cut and he's willing to play at a cheaper price, like I think there's a lot of intriguing things you can do in sub-package football with a guy like that. Um, with a ball hawk, a mentorship, you know, for the rookie that would come in probably with that, um, all of that. I feel like he could fit in there, but the only realistic scenario really is probably him taking a pay cut. Um, I, right. just have, and, I, I just have a hard time thinking they're going to keep him at nine point what seven seven five million man on the, the cap. Yeah, That's a lot. The, the the way I can see this pay cut working is if they said, "Hey, let's sign you to like a two year extension or whatever," because he wants to play safety, and he did say, "Like, hey, I'm down to extend my career if, if I can play some safety." Um, and if you said, "Hey, you're going to get your nine point seven million." Just not all next year, <laughs> you know. Like you're gonna, we're gonna stretch this out. We're gonna say, hey, maybe you're a six million dollar cap hit this next season, or a five million dollar cap hit this next season, and we find a way, or they could throw on some void years. But I do agree, if Patrick Peterson sticks around, it has to be on a pay cut, and if he's not willing to take that, I'm I'm right with you. They need to move on. But some of these other guys, Mason Cole, Allen Robinson, Allen Robinson's a guy. He's similar boat, like. I'm okay if Allen Robinson sticks around with a massive pay cut. Like he, there, he cannot be anywhere near ten million dollars of a cap hit. Um, but if he were to take a pay cut to say like four million dollars ish or so, you know, like you know, that'd be interesting. But those are always tough for players to con- to consider when they're under a contract. Well, one of the needs they have is blocking wide receiver. You can't mm-hmm. run the Arthur Smith offense without having an absolute hoss of a blocker at receiver. Um, they play too much condensed splits. They play too much with the running back. Uh, kind of fitting in there uh, behind the receiver. Like, receivers blocking in Arthur Smith's offense are key, and Allen Robinson did a nice job blocking. Like, that is true. I just don't think, you know, $10 million, uh, is obviously not a tenable number. He could easily be a guy you cut and maybe bring back on a, on a cheaper contract, a one-year kind of, you know, three-ish million dollar deal. Mason Cole, I think, is the more interesting one. Pretty clear to me they're going to move on as him as a starter. I think they're going to either sign a center or – maybe draft one. I think there's clearly talent on both the free agency and the draft pool to do that. Um, and he has a pretty hefty deal, and they can cut him and save some nice money too. I think he is ideally your backup center next year, but again, at his cap hit, like they have to clear $20 million just yeah. to sign their rookie class, their practice squad, all of that by the start of the season. So they have to make some moves. Mason Cole feels like a guy that could definitely come back as depth, but he also feels like someone that might be on the outs just because of the depth of the class, the free agency class. It's very possible that they move on. I feel like they will move on from Allen Robinson, unfortunately. I understand why. Uh, I understand Paul's kind of rationale there, but I, I do think he's kind of – on the outs of his career, unfortunately, at this point. And, and look, you can find plenty of wide receivers out there in, in free agency and in the draft. And I think this is also another draft that's really deep at wide receiver that you could get one without spending a first or a second round pick on them and get a really good addition to your team. So I, I agree with you. Like uh, uh, Allen Robinson's a guy they, they could cut. And it's like, it sucks because I think he's a good guy. You know, I think you and I both had a lot of good conversations with him. Um, but uh, I think that that's a place where they can cut some cut some dead weight there as far as the salary cap space that they need to clear. Mason Cole, though, the Steelers need help at center, right? But even if they draft a guy or sign a guy, you still want to have a backup. And Mason Cole as a backup make makes sense because like if he was a, if he was backup with the caliber of his play, I, I think it would make it would make sense. But here's the problem with that: a backup center for six point two million dollars. That's that that that's a that's a tougher sell for me, especially when you can save about four point seven five million dollars by letting him go. Are you letting go of Mason Cole right now, Nick? I think I am. I, listen, it wasn't just the fact that he didn't he wasn't a net positive in pass pro or the run game. I mean, we're talking about a guy that had trouble getting accurate snaps off. I mean, yeah, we were talking about the basics of the position. Now he's a very solid backup and could find work elsewhere. But is that guy going to take you know the pay cut? that you would want. I don't know if he will. I think that's a real question. And technically, you do have the backup center on the roster if you trust Nate Herbig enough. So Nate Herbig could really slot in there and be your backup center if you wanted to. I love the depth that Mason Cole would bring. He's just not worth $6 million against the cap. Again, when you are pinching numbers and you want to make 
signings that will make a difference for this team. You want to add, you know, a, a corner probably. You want to add a safety. You probably want to add a linebacker. Like you want to resign some of your guys, right? You want to bring back, you know, or maybe a Montrevious Adams or an Armin Watts or whoever it might be, a Quan Alexander. Like that you're gonna have to find the fat somewhere. And and man, six over six million against the cap for a backup center. I mean, tough sell for me. I'm right with you. They can move they can move on there. Another question here comes from Bruce in Cleveland, Mississippi, asking about another guy who maybe the Steelers could move on from. Here's here's Bruce. Hey, what's up, Chris? This is Bruce Ross calling in from Cleveland, Mississippi. Man, I have a question about the safety position. I, I just I don't like DeMonte KZ uh and how we're using him. I just really think um uh, he's not a fit to be that strong safety. Uh I think it's making Mika have to play in the box more because he's not a guy that has a lot of size. Uh he will come up and make make a strong tackle, but I just don't think he can hold up with the bigger tight ends and and just play in the box. And Miko's so talented where he can play anywhere, but it's taken away from his uh, natural gift of being that free roamer. So what do you suggest we do at the safety position, man? I, I'm ready for Miko to Looks like we had some problems, technical issues there with the end of Bruce's call. But to Bruce's point, uh, Nick, and, and I think we got it there. And also, thank you, Bruce, for your question. Uh, 412-223-6644 to get your question on the show. But uh, to Bruce's point, I mean, I feel him about DeMonte KZ and, and KZ. He's made some plays here and there, but I think the Steelers need a more traditional, bigger, strong safety who can take on tight ends, who can help in the box and make it so that Mika Fitzpatrick doesn't have to worry about that stuff anymore. And he could go back to being the best free range and center fielder in the, in the NFL. I'll highlight five guys. Chan Sullivan, Levi Wallace, mm -hmm. Patrick Peterson, Demonte Casey, Keanu Neal. All of them are slower defensive backs. So when you put a guy like Casey over the top, you are capping the ability to stop those big plays with yards after catch. A lot of the explosive plays they allowed this year weren't even like deep balls. They were drag routes that went 30 yards because they're too moves. slow in pursuit. Yep. And I think that's a big reason why DeMonte Casey wasn't cutting it. He's had a lot of significant injuries in his career, unfortunately, that has sapped a lot of his athleticism. Keanu Neal is the same way. Minka Fitzpatrick was used as a box safety slot corner this year. That is yeah. not where he's at his best. It takes him away from the play. Quarterbacks can easily avoid him. Uh, he is a great blitzer. He's a physical, strong safety. Minka is an elite, strong safety, like legitimately. He was awesome in that role this year, but you don't get the best gain out of that. I mean, they basically played him like the Seahawks did Jamal Adams at times this year. I mean, that is legitimately what they had to do because they didn't have that guy in the slot. Um, they didn't have that. And, and, and to Casey's credit, he can be that deep guy. He's got great range. He's got um, very good ball skills, but he's not a great box safety. He's not a great tackler anymore. Um, and so, yeah, I think, you know, I would turn over the safety room. I, I would maybe move on from Casey and move on from Neil um, and try and bring in guys, maybe bring back a Terrell Edmonds, for example. Um, but this is a really good safety group in free agency. Like you look at it, uh, Cam Carl, um, Julian Blackman, I think, would be such an awesome fit for them. I love Julian Blackman. I'm awesome. right with you on that. He's great. He could play over the top, could play in the box, could play at slot. He could be your kind of interchangeable piece. I thought that's what Terrell Edmonds did really well with Minka is you could put Edmonds at a single high, you could put him in the box, you could put him in the slot, put him over the tight end, and that allowed Minka to move. And I feel like that's what they need. Julian Blackman could add that. Uh, another guy that could add it, bring home Jordan Whitehead. Like, that. that is a legitimate hey. option. Like, he fits that, man. Um it's a really good safety free agency class. Um, there's a, there's flashier names out there too. I don't know a Kyle Duggar. You know, if you really want a big linebacker, safety, yeah. tight end eraser. Don't love the fit, but right. I love the fit of personally for me. My ideal target would be Julian Black. I just think I, I, you know what fit. I'm right with you. I've liked Julian Blackman for a minute. I, I thought he could be like an interesting trade candidate earlier this early this past season. If they could land Julian Blackman, him with Minka, I think that would be a heck of a pair to put together. But we got to get to Mock Draft Monday. We have a winner to, to announce and some picks to go over here. We'll do that with Nick here on the Locked On Steelers podcast. I'm Chris Carter. Stick with us. We'll be right back.
But first, I want to remind you this show is also brought to you by Game Time. Game Time is the app you need to download right to your phone right now to make buying tickets to your favorite events not a stressful endeavor. Because Game Time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets to all your sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. They give you killer deals on even on last minute tickets with a best price guarantee that can't be beat so you can stop stressing over your tickets and start getting hyped for the fun that you're about to have. The Game Time app allows you to book tickets even up to the last minute, even up to an hour after your event has begun. That's why you got to download the Game Time app right to your phone. It be, gives you the best of both worlds. You can see all the accuracy and uh, of what your tickets will actually give you, like when you go to the ticket booth, but you'll get the prices of what you're getting from scalpers on the street. That's what you want to get is game time gets you the best prices with the best opportunities. And these are flash deals on, on tickets for basketball games, hockey games, baseball games. When that comes back around, concerts, comedy events, theater events, anything near you, game time most likely has tickets that you could take advantage of. And they're always getting you the best price. And they promise you because if you find tickets somewhere else that gets you uh, tickets for a lesser lesser price in the same section or row for less somewhere else, game time credits you 110% of that difference. Snag the tickets without stress with game time. Download the game time app, create an account, and use code locked on for $20 off your first purchase or go to the website gametime.co term and conditions apply create an account redeem code locked on for $20 off download game time today last minute tickets lowest price guaranteed Back here on the Locked On Steelers podcast, Chris Carter, Nick Faraboth, and we just answered some questions from the Locked On Steelers hotline, but now it's time to announce our Mock Draft Monday winner. As always, we as on, over the weekend before the show, I post on my Twitter and on the Locked On Steelers Facebook group, hey, everyone, post, you know, give me your mock drafts, and this week, our rule, Nick, we had a specific, we, every week we come up with a specific set of rules, this week, I urged everyone, you had to draft a, a, your your first pick being a defensive player and you were allowed up to one trade and I wanted to get to go along the line with as I planned on talking about cornerbacks to start this week so with that being said let's get to this week's winner and it is Jason Weller who gave us some interesting picks here mm-hmm. and I wanted to talk to, to to Nick about the options here now for those who are listening and can't see it on on this on their screen uh Jason had one trade. Looks like what he did was he traded away. He traded up in the second round from the Steelers pick at 51 to the 40th overall pick and gave away one of the Steelers two fourth round picks to do so. But with his picks, first round, he went Cooper to Gene, the cornerback slash safety out of Iowa. However you see him, that's a defensive back addition. That's one of the type of players that Nick and I are talking about. Then with that second round pick that he traded up with, he made sure to get Zach Frazier. So the Steelers do get their center in this draft class. To me, Zach Frazier is the closest thing to Jackson Powers Johnson in this class. Then he went and got a pick that I really love in Peyton Wilson, the linebacker out of NC State. Six foot four, covers well, had four interceptions, has the size, has the athleticism. I'm very excited to see him at the combine. I think he could be a really big answer. Then finishing out the draft in the fourth round, taking Matt Gonzalez. Alves, the pit offensive tackle. Um, we'll talk about him in a second. And then Christian McCaffrey's younger brother, Luke McCaffrey, the wide receiver out of Rice, and then finishing out in the seventh round with a tight end out of Michigan, A.J. Bonner. So, Nick, looking at these picks, first of all, do you think Cooper DeGene lasts until 20? Because some people see him as a top 10 pick. Some people see him as a, in the 20s. I do. I do think he'll last then until there. He goes sometime between 20 to 25. Feels like the right kind of range for him. Maybe 15 to 25 if you want to push it. Man, he's a beautiful fit for the Steelers defense. You know, he can be that kind of rangy guy, can play in the slot, can play outside, um, has great athleticism. This guy's a track speed athlete, can definitely play man. Again, could make that switch to safety. I think he sticks a corner, but I think you can train him as that sub package kind of piece, can play the dime back, can do a lot of different things. He's a really good player. He's instinctual, ball skills. You look at it, man. He's got it. So I'd like DeJean there um, as the pick at 20, especially if, you know, Terry on Arnold and Quinion Mitchell, who in my opinion are the top two corners in this class are off the board. You know, you talk about DeJean, McKinstry, or Wiggins. I mean, all three of those guys are very good picks. And I think I'm, I'm starting to lean more and more towards DeJean being the best of those options. I, I really like his flexibility. I'm intrigued to see what he does in the in the the combine numbers wise because oftentimes too, how many times Nick, you know, you've been watching the combine and taking notes on that over the over the years and, and reporting on it. 
how many times do we see an entire draft class shaken up because someone runs the perfect 40 yard dash or someone runs a terrible 40 yard dash. And then all of a sudden the guy that everyone saw as CB one at the start of the year is now like CB five. And there's a whole different go. I mean, even last year, Christian Gonzalez was talked about as he was going to be the, 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 the highest corner taken. And he dropped there. Joy Porter jr. Was supposed to be a first round pick. He dropped to the second round. And I just, I think it's going to be interesting to see the priorities there. Where do you see, uh, the rest of the rest of this class fi- kind of filling out. And so the thing is, I don't know if there's a sauce Gardner, Patrick Chatan in this class. So I don't right. know if there's a top five pick. So where does Terry on Arnold, Quinion Mitchell, Cooper DeJean, whoever that, uh, that team has a corner one go, maybe 10, maybe 11. Um, they're, you know, starting in that at 10 to 20 range is probably where they go off the board, but also these teams aren't stupid. They're going to know that there is a lot of good corners in this class and that's what happened last year, too. There were a lot of good corners in last year's class. So some teams felt like they didn't need to take Joey Porter Jr., for example, because they felt like they could get a guy later. Um, the Lions got Brian Branch in the second round. Like that That's the type of, of – we could look at one of the second-round picks here and say, holy smokes, how did that guy fall to you know, 50? And it's because in any other class he would have been a first-round pick. And so, yeah, there's going to be a little bit of like a discount on some of these guys. So the Steelers might be able to get Quinion Mitchell at 20 or Cooper DeGene at 20, or trade back to like 25, 26 and get Nate Wiggins or Kool-Aid McKinstry. Like that's possible. It's that type of class. And I think the Steelers, though, like they did last year when they nabbed Joey Porter Jr. at 32, would be at their best nabbing one of those top five guys and making and smashing it and going, listen, this this position, we're not touching it for another four or five years because we got our three. Let's talk about the other picks here. I want to focus on the next three. Zach Frazier, uh, real quick thoughts on his on his ability at center and whether or not he'd be a good fit and be a guy that could just plug and play. He'd be a starter right away. He's like a 10-year starter. He's like a perfect fit for Zach. He's a great zone running center, too. Mm-hmm. Arthur Smith runs wide zone all the time. You see it on tape like he's out there reaching linebackers. Super sturdy, great core strength, wrestling background, so you know he plays with good leverage. He's got it all. He's a he's a plug and play starter. Like that is one guy where you know they ease some guys into their starting role. Sometimes he'll be a week one starter. I'm right with you there. I, I'm Peyton Wilson's one of my favorite sleepers of the draft. I have a feeling he's gonna play. He I, I read that he can hit top speeds of like 23 miles per hour. I have a feeling he is going to crush the combine, and everyone's gonna be talking about him like he's a second round pick. And I'm not so sure that the Steelers can wait that far to get him. Well, the big thing with him is does he crush the medical part? Of that, oh, he has a lot of injuries in his history. Now it's a bad linebacker class, man. This linebacker class is brutal. There mm-hmm. is some guys in there outside of Peyton Wilson, Junior Colson, Edron Cooper, Trevin Wallace. Like, there's a lot of guys that you can point to in that Jeremiah Trotter. Like, there are guys that you can point to, but Wilson has linebacker one tape. Like that to me, he has the best tape in the class. He flies over the field. He's got elite coverage range. It's just, can the guy stay healthy? And so if he passes those medicals and goes out on the field and runs what he's going to run, jumps what he's going to jump, I think we could be talking about a top 50 pick. But again, medicals, 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 medicals. It's certainly a concern. And if the medicals aren't great, maybe Peyton Wilson becomes this year's Darnell Washington. Maybe that could be very interesting. Last thing here, Matt Gonsalves, a guy we've both seen and talked to for years as he was a Pitt Panther, uh, an experienced offensive tackle. He also has had some injury history, was out for, for most of this past season. Do you think he's a good fourth round fit for what the Steelers need offensive tackle? I don't see him replacing Dan Moore Jr. or anything like that, but he could be a developmental piece that if they want to add a a tackle to this line that they don't pay a lot for, I think he could develop into that type of player. Feels like the type of guy you would draft if you said sign a tackle in free yeah. agency and then let Dan Moore walk and then Gonzalez becomes a swing next year. Um, mm-hmm. Could definitely be a swing guy, definitely a zone running guy, very athletic. Um, the injury he told me was that he tore his plantar plate in his toe, so it was severe turf toe. Um, so he is going to be healthy. He'll be fully healthy, ready to go. No concerns there. Um, he's very explosive off the line. He's got a little bit of pass move polish to him. Like I really like how he mixes up his sets, but his hands are a little bit, a little bit all over the place. But very smart kid. Um, honestly, pretty young in his football career. Like didn't play that much um, in high school, so it was kind of a late riser. Um, so he's got a lot of upside to him. I like Mack and Solve as a lot versatile guy that's played what four different positions over his time at Pitt. Uh, could play on the interior, could play either tackle spot. So. 
good fourth round pick with upside there. Um, but if you're waiting till the fourth round to go with tackle, tells me, you know, the plan before was who did you sign? Dan Moore's probably the swing. And, and at that point, also, um, where's Broderick Jones fit in? I think that's the other question. It's another big question here. We'll get into more offensive line questions. Uh, we've been a- answering a lot of offensive line questions and talk a lot of center and tackle. That's why I wanted to kind of switch it up and talk more defense secondary talk today. And trust me, we'll get into more of that as we go along. The combine, it's about a, is it, what is it, a week away now? Uh, about a week and a half. We'll be week there. Next yeah, because it's yeah, that's right. We get there on the neck on that Monday. Yeah. So we, I will, I will be in, in Indianapolis along with Nick and a lot of other, a lot of our other friends that that hop on the Locked On Steelers podcast. Um, because and we'll have a lot to break down for you there. But Nick, thank you so much for joining us here on the Locked On Steelers podcast. Let people they can find you, follow you, and get more of your work. Yeah, thanks for having me on. As always, Chris, you can follow me on X at Fair by FB right there. Make sure to read SteelersNow.com. We got draft profiles coming out we got all the draft covers We're really leaning to that i also have some free agent targets that maybe uh, i think are good i'm um, writing that stuff up so we got a ton of analysis kind of hitting the off season hard and then when the combine comes you know we're really gonna smack that out of the park top Steelers targets what whatever omar says all of that I, I absolutely check out Nick and Alan. They do a great job at SteelersNow.com. We're going to probably have Alan on later this week, too. I'm Chris Carter. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Carter Critiques. Read my work at the Pittsburgh Post Gazette, post gazettecom Find me here on the Locked On Steelers podcast every, every Monday through Friday, talking your Pittsburgh Steelers right here on the Locked On Steelers podcast. We'll see you tomorrow on the Tuesday episode of the Locked On Steelers podcast.